Hello guys, today we're gonna talk about this labs in CS50, so this is new for the 2021 version and I really like it because now we can practice more and also I think the problem sets have a very steep learning curve so I think this lab one and the following ones will be great for get you ready for the problem set. So if you want to become a web developer without a degree, take a look at the description below. So without further ado, let's take a look at population. I'll skip hello because hello is pretty straightforward. All you have to really do is say hello world. It's just showing you how to print hello. We can do that. So how do we do hello? So this is the first, I'll do hello quickly and then the population. So you come here, file CS50 IDE, you just Google and sign up very easily. You copy this code, oops, you copy this code over and then you save this file. How are you going to call this? Uh, hello.c. So every C file starts with a C extension. Uh, and then what you do is you need to start a new terminal. So terminals are where you run programs. You come here, you say hello, enter, and then dot, which means current uh, directory, since we are at the root, hello, and we run hello.c. So that's the easiest problem. Now let's take a look at the first actual lab population. Before we look at the code, let's look at the description. So uh, population is really cool. It will really help you with the next, with cache, which is one of the first problem sets. So the idea is you uh, ask the user for a starting population, and then you ask the user for an ending population. And you wanna know how long does it take you to go from the starting population to the ending population? How does that work? The way it's gonna work is that we have a formula. So every year, we have n over three new population, so it can be llamas or people, and n over four pass away. And we keep, so every year, so you can already think we'll probably need a loop. So the n over three, let's see how that works. The n over three will give me my population growth my n over 4 will be pass away. So every year, how does, so my current population, what will be the growth by the end of the year? Will be equal to current population plus the result of this, n over 3. So n is actually the current population. So the population I have right now. So this is the growth minus how much we, how many people or animals pass away. So that's the formula we have. However, this will, this formula, so let me decrease, this will go on every single year. So we need some sort of loop. And how long are we gonna do this? As long as my current population is smaller than my ending population, we keep on growing the population and as the population grows the years pass and that's what will get you uh, get us our final result another thing is we should prompt the user for the starting population but if the user prints a number less than nine we should keep asking so this goes back to something he talks in lecture about do while loops the way the while loops work is that you first run the program so let's show what the while loop we first run the program and then we check a condition why is this good for this case because if we just had a while let's say we just had a while instead of a do while we never got the start size in the first place so then we we can't know if it's uh, under the conditions we are looking for. So the advantage of a do while is it at least we run once, so we are able to initialize start size and then we check if it's 
less than nine. So if it's less than nine, we'll keep on asking the user. We'll say, hey, I want the right solution. If it's greater, we go to the next one. And the next one is says that the user should enter a number. Uh, so we keep on asking if the user enters a number less than the starting population. So my end size has to be greater than my start size. Otherwise, there is no population growth. So that's why in the do while for this one, we have while and size is less than start size, meaning the person the user wrote on the terminal uh, and size smaller than the start size. We keep on asking, why do we have the declaration of the variable outside? Why don't we have something like that? Because the compiler will complain, this doesn't work. We can't declare a variable inside of a loop like that because it keeps on declaring over and over again so that doesn't quite work so that's why we have the variable initialization outside of the loop so far so good so then we actually go to the problem itself so we need to create a new variable called years past so that will keep track on how long we've been growing our population otherwise there's no way to know and then we'll have a current size variable that will start being the start size. 